On to Malaysia now, where a coronavirus vaccination centre has been shut down completely after nearly 200 workers tested positive. The Southeast Asian nation is battling a serious outbreak driven by a very highly infectious variant. On Tuesday, Malaysia reported about 11,079 new infections, which is the highest in a single day since the beginning of the pandemic. Our next report gets you all the details. The COVID-19 vaccine centre in Malaysia has laid down its needles after almost half the staff tested positive for coronavirus. Out of 454 workers and volunteers screened over the weekend, 204 have been infected. The facility, which can give 3,000 doses a day, is located around 15 miles outside Kuala Lumpur and has been closed for cleaning and a change in staffing. People who received their vaccines between July the 9th and 12th at the centre are now being advised to self-isolate for 10 days. Malaysia has announced new measures to support its ailing public health system as a wave of cases fuelled by the highly infectious Delta variant sweeps across the country. On Tuesday, 11,079 new infections were reported, the third daily record seen in the past week, as well as 125 deaths. Malaysia has one of the highest per capita rates of infection in Southeast Asia, but also one of the highest rates of inoculation. About 25% of the population have received at least one dose of a vaccine. All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking in Vion at this hour, where the Biden administration has announced a plan to evacuate Afghan interpreters and translators who were employed by the American military for near, in the nearly 20-year-long period that Americans were present in Afghanistan, as it is now feared that their lives could in fact be at stake as Taliban continues its offensive and takes over more and more territory in Afghanistan. The evacuation under the Operation Allies Refuge will begin during the last week of July. It will be available first for the special immigrant visa applicants that are already in the process of applying for U.S. residency. The evacuation plan could potentially affect tens of thousands of Afghans. There are an estimated 18,000 people that are interpreters, translators and others who worked for the American forces. And the American government says that these people would qualify for evacuation provided they apply for American visas along with their families. The total number of evacuees is expected to be as high as 80,000 provided all of them apply for a visa. The officials have declined to give the details as to where those evacuated people will be taken. Will they be allowed to stay in the United States is of course a question. But the administration has been working on identifying a third country or what the Americans describe as a U.S. territory that could potentially host the Afghans while their visa applications are being processed. Now, U.S. President Joe Biden has been facing pressure to come up with a plan to help evacuate the Afghan military helpers ahead of next month's U.S. military withdrawal. At President Biden's direction, the United States will begin relocation flights for the first group of eligible and interested Afghan nationals and their families who have supported the United States and our partners and who are in the special immigrant visa pipeline uh, and will we'll be, uh, begin those relocation flights by the end of this month. Our top priority in all of this is the safety and security of these SIV applicants. They have already, uh, in many cases, at great risk to themselves, uh, assisted the United States over the years. And so we don't want to do anything uh, that might potentially uh, jeopardize their safety and security going forward. And so uh, there are going to be uh, some details that we may not be able to uh, provide. Uh, and so right now, we don't have anything to offer in terms of uh, the size uh, of that group, uh, uh, areas to where they may be uh, relocated. Uh, but it is safe to say that we are planning for a range of contingencies. Uh, we are moving as swiftly as we can in the processing. Now, the Taliban are pressing on with their surge in Afghanistan after having claimed control on a strategic border crossing spin Baldak on the frontier with Pakistan. A Taliban flag was also seen at the closed Pakistan-Afghanistan border in Chaman. Now, Afghanistan's interior ministry has denied that they have in fact taken over the area. Spin Boldak is the area crossing on the main highway between Kandahar and Quetta. Pakistan and continue, continuing onwards towards Karachi. Now, Spin Boldak is the Taliban's biggest strategic gain so far. At least about 900 trucks cross this frontier pretty much every day for trade. 
The spin ball duck provides the Taliban a direct access to the Pakistani province of Balochistan. And this province is important, as this is where the Taliban has its reserve fighters. Also, its top leadership, there is a highway that connects Pakistan's Bolda to the Karachi port. And it's significant because it helps Taliban with its heroin trade as well. Now, according to the Tajikistan border guards, nearly 347 refugees from Afghanistan had crossed into the Central Asian nation over the last two days. Most of the refugees are said to be young girls who fled from the Taliban to save their lives. Two babies reportedly died during the border crossing. Meanwhile, a senior Afghan government delegation is expected to meet with the Taliban in Doha. The jump start of the long stall peace talks between the two sides is expected to take place. The delegation will include the head of the country's reconciliation council. Meanwhile, American diplomats are also escalating what they describe as a sort of a charm offensive with Afghans and neighbors. The objective is to try and secure a spot in Central Asia to monitor and to respond to any resurgence after the U.S. military withdraws. But unlike what happened in 2001, America is of course facing more reluctance within the region this time round to try to join the American plan. The administration has given a few details of what kind of security access it is seeking in the region or from which countries it seeks to have access into Afghanistan. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.